Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and it is Thursday morning, August 26th. We finally know what the 10x slash summoning event is going to be for this weekend, so I will get you some quick context on that and let you know which champions are in it and what I think, plus get you all caught up on raid in general. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, the 10X is not live right now. As you know, it's going to be an event coming up this weekend that we are just letting you know about as soon as we know about it. So now let's go ahead and go through each individual champion and I'll get you my quick thoughts on them for this 10X this weekend. And first up, we've got the featured Void Legendary for this event, which is going to be Solus. Now, Solus did actually get reworked recently. I believe they took his base speed from 87 to 97 and Solus actually hits really hard for a defense type champion plus he is amazing for the faction wars for night rev because those stuns are super impactful you can get that up to a 50 50 chance on the a1 he's got lots of utility and lots of things that he can do the aoe uh provoke is going to help you deal with some cc on those uh faction wars waves so uh lots of stuff going on here with Solus. he's not like the uh a top five void legendary or anything but he definitely has a lot of utility especially if you haven't finished night rev faction wars and he's one of the harder hitting defense based champions in the game then we've got the savage nuking queen trunda um so yeah trunda's a really good one to have she is probably the best arena nuker in the game uh because of this forge rhythm uh, ability here that if you get her in low accuracy is going to hit all enemies twice you can see here place an extra hit on enemies not under the stun so uh if that first hit doesn't land the stun uh the popular build is like putting her in a savage set and as low of accuracy as you can get her to make sure you're getting that forge rhythm to hit super hard twice and it just completely blows up the enemy team so trunda is definitely a great champion to have on your account next up is going to be fushan from the lizard man uh fushan is uh is a really just solid legendary uh he's got the a1 with uh with a chance to get a multi-hit in the aoe stuns you're starting to see a uh, a theme here in this 10x we've got lots of aoe kind of uh cc utility and then he's also got uh the four times at random lowering of the defense which is very good and one of the best auras in the game of ally speed by 24 percent with a really solid base speed of 106 and he can hit decently hard if you get him built to do damage so uh fushan would be a great addition especially to anybody who hasn't finished lizardman yet then we go to Netherol. Now, netherol has got the triple hit A1 that can place a bunch of poison. And again, uh, with that similar theme, the AOE stun. And if the stun doesn't land, it's going to place the big version of decrease speed. So very good ability there. And then we also get the AOE massive turn meter decrease of 75%. So if you get this guy in high speed, uh, relentless, cycling through this stuff can be extremely suppressive, uh, not only against waves, but he can also be great in some of those clan boss compositions, just spamming this A1 and placing a ton of poisons with all those giant slayer procs now we move into the epics and we'll start with tuak the wanderer now uh as i'm looking at tuak i did not remember that he's got the aoe uh bookable 100 percent uh of the big version of decreased speed so uh that's a pretty solid ability there and it'll also place an increased speed on him and then uh heal by 15 percent uh if he's low on health so yeah tuak can be very solid for uh not only faction wars but also some of the uh some of the more progression type compositions lots of turn meter manipulation uh, you can see here booked to a four turn cooldown of stealing and so not only removing but stealing turn meter is different because it's going to take it from them and add it to him and they can also place a stun for two turns as long as it's not like a boss and all that so oh uh, yeah tubak could definitely be a very solid epic in the right situation then we've got Armina in the Barbarians with some A1 stunning, similar to Solus. And then we've also got the AoE defense break while stealing turn meter uh, if the defense or the decreased defense lands. And then we've also got a chance to stun as long as we fully deplete the turn meter. And then a decent passive here of fill a term uh this champion's turn meter by 10% uh, each time she actually stuns someone. So yeah, Armina definitely a very solid epic in the Barbarians. Burinjiri from the Shadowkin I think is a little bit underrated. I think a lot of you should be building a Burinjiri uh, for the launch of Shadowkin Faction Wars, which by the way, when in the world is that going to happen? Uh, I can't believe we haven't heard anything in terms of Shadowkin because uh, they said they would give us like a couple months heads up and they haven't even done that yet. I thought for sure that announcement would come pretty close to the Ninja Shadowkin promotion. They'd be like, hey, in honor of this promotion, now this is the launch date of Shadowkin Faction Wars, but 
I'm starting to wonder, is this going to be like years until we get Shadow Confaction Wars? But anyway, uh, that's a that's a different tangent. But Burinjiri, very good because you've got the A1 CC uh, scales with defense, so a very sturdy champion. AoE stun that you can book to a three-turn cooldown. We're going to get strengthened on all of our allies, plus shielding if they are low on health. And then we've also got a passive with consistent heals as we're getting through those waves. So, uh, yeah, Burinjiri is going to be a very solid staple for lots of those Shadow Confaction Wars teams whenever they actually need to be built. And the last uh, champion in this weekend's 10x is going to be Fodbor the Bard. Now he's got a triple hit A1 uh, that places heal reduction. Could be extremely good in the uh, in the spirit keep. And then also going to uh, have a chance to steal two random buffs from the target. Uh, and place a stun as well if they don't have any buffs. And the AoE defense break uh, booked to a four turn cooldown. So not amazing, but okay. Uh, so yeah, definitely a, a pretty solid epic, especially in uh, some of those keep situations. So that concludes the champions in this 10x. Remember, it was Solus, Turunda, Fushan, Netheril, Tuhok, Armina, Burajiri, and Fodbor. So um, what do I think of this 10x? Whew. I don't think it's as good as some of the stuff they've been doing, like the Duchess Masha Led craziness, uh, the Bad L, Siffy. Uh, it's nothing like that, uh, but it does have an S tier champion in it in Trunda, and it does have a really solid champion in Solus. Uh, Solus is probably somewhere around that like 12 to 15th best void legendary which isn't great uh but but he definitely does have some impact especially for people that haven't finished night rev like i said so um not yet and there's no like uh I, I don't hear of any like guaranteed summon type event coming like with helior or countess lick so um all in all not that great of a 10x in my opinion i would probably recommend for 90 or so percent of, of you out there just hold off until a 2x Unless you are like uh, kind of champion collecting and you've already got a pretty solid account and you just don't have a Trunda yet, uh, then it would make sense. Like for me, when I pulled for the uh, 10x Masha Led, uh, I was kind of an end game player that really needed a Masha Led still. So that 10x made sense for me. So uh, for someone in that, situ in that similar situation that doesn't have a Trunda yet, then it would make sense. But for everybody else, I I'd say probably just go ahead and hold off. CVC has ended, so we will not have another clan versus clan uh, until 12 days from now. Next week will be an off week. I thought we were going to lose this one. We ended up barely uh, clutching it out in the end. So uh, I hope you guys had good luck in your CVC, and we can go ahead and grade these uh, these two that we got here, uh, or these uh, four that we got here, and I'll let you know uh, how they grade out. Have to move the camera over a little bit, so I'm not blocking the stats. But let's uh, let's let's do this live. Oh, there we go. We get we, we got a triple six HP. That is a that is a great ring. I love that. That's that's an A there. Uh, we got attack, um, and then we got two flat stats. So uh, it could roll okay, uh, and it is and it is the really good set there, uh, the reaction set. So we'll take it. But that one's like a like a, like a C. Um, and then these ones here. Hey, there we go. It is it is attack. Um, and it, but it did get a double percent speed, so that is uh, could roll very well. And again, it is the reaction. And then we've got this one here. Did not get speed and double flat, and it's attack main stat. So that's kind of a, a triple three strikes and you're out. Uh, one really bad one, two decent ones, and one really good one. So hey, you know we'll take it. Then for the tournaments going on in game, we have got a spider tournament over the weekend, and then we've also got the uh, tag team arena tournament going on uh, as well. We had uh, the double, the double dungeon, the fire knight, the ice golem. I tried to, uh, I tried to make it happen and win them both. It was kind of realistic for me. I uh, was able to win the fire knight one, but uh, but ended up getting hoodwinked pretty bad here on the uh, on the ice golem. I blew it. Uh, you know, Andre was going pretty crazy here, so I, I let it go. But uh, first and second, not bad. We'll take it. Then for the events, you've got the Summon Rush right here, and that's mostly going to be a pseudo countdown to when the uh, the 10x events are going to launch this weekend. Uh, that should be pretty much coinciding with your portal uh, when, when those champions will be kind of added in there to the 10x pool. The Artifact Enhancement event is going to end the day, so make sure you are scooping up the uh, the points here and double dipping uh, with those upgrades if you got some good CVC pieces or something. And then the Dungeon Divers as well. I would at least try to get to 25-25 here to scoop up the 10 Core Hammers up for grabs and the dungeon divers as we move on into the shop to see if there's any offers worth talking about uh you've only got five days left to decide on the monthly pack and it grades out as about a 2.5 so it's not a bad general progression one now these two for one mini mix packs i did tweet about this yesterday to uh to let people know but for those of you that aren't on twitter let me go ahead and plug this in for you so you can see exactly how these grade out we got 60k 
uh, for the energy, no, but we've got, uh, so it, it gives two keys, uh, which they say is worth 200 gems. I'm going to call that 50 gems. Uh, I, I don't think they're worth 200 gems, but we'll put that in there. Uh, XP for a day, we got two, and then we've got 10 brews along with two energy refills, uh, two ancient shards, two arena refills, and two four-star chicken. Boom, you can see the 6.17. Uh, it's one of the best offers you're going to see in the game. This is what offers should look like. <laughs> We've got three bucks, and you get uh, a pretty pretty general breakdown of some value here. So uh, if you're in the money, if you're in the market to spend money on raid, this is obviously uh, a really good purchase to go ahead and make. And I was joking around on Twitter. I was saying uh, towards the end of the month here, Plarian must be trying to hit some uh, revenue quotas. So they're throwing these out to uh, to really incentivize people to spend here at the end of the month. But like I said, three bucks for what you're getting here is, is about the best you're going to see in the game. Uh, $25 for uh, five star cruel gear is not one of the best you're going to see in the game. So that would be a pass for 99% of you. Uh, the great tome pack. Uh, I can plug in the first wave here. But... Not going to be super great, in my opinion. Uh, then we've got two and one on the tomes. Uh, yeah, 1.58 to get to one tome. And yeah, so uh, in my opinion, that's probably not going to cut it. And we got another pack string here. I've seen this a bunch. Um, I believe it ends up being like a 1.8 or, or or something like that. Uh, so if you're a, if you're a decent spender who really needs some energy, I can see this one making sense. But uh, for those of you that are more diligent about your spending, I would either do the monthly and the mini and kind of call it good there. Alrighty, so that's going to do it for this one. As always, with the wrap-up videos down below in the pinned comment, I will be live for the next few hours. If you want to drop by and say hi, would love to see you there. Otherwise, have a great rest of the end of your week here heading into the weekend. And thank you for watching. Peace.